We are working on an approach that, that says if we can have our students reaching appropriate literacy and numeracy achievement levels at the end of each of those key checkpoints or transition points through our system, then we believe that we can get more of them uh, across the stage at graduation. Well, it was a journey. When, we, when I got here, um, we, we sat down as a team and we did some visioning. We started with our assessment data, to be very honest, and we realized that what we were currently doing was not working. When we were first introduced with one of our assessments, I was unclear on how it actually linked to curriculum outcomes, but when you sat down and you broke apart the assessment and you linked it to the curriculum outcomes, it made a lot more sense and it was easier to implement when I fully understood it. Assessment data really is the fiber of, of quality instructional practice. What it does, it, is, it allows us to monitor student achievement and where they're at at all times, so we can be responsive in our teaching practices. Teachers sit down and score these common assessments as a team and then uh, talk about the data. What are our strengths, what are our opportunities for growth, and what are we going to do? We use the data boards to guide our instruction on a daily basis. We bring them into our common collaborative time and we use them to see where all students are at in the areas of literacy. Any of the little guys that are at the beginning levels uh, in their achievement all have a targeted intervention plan that are attached to them. So we wrap a team of supports around them. So it's not just that teacher trying to do it all on their own. Assessment is one part of our teaching, but it's a very important part because it allows us to, to see where achievement lies with students, but also with ourselves too. You know, you hear the term standardized assessments in the States and it's this horrible negative thing, but then you come to a place like this where we've realized how valuable that data actually is and we found a way to use it to improve our instructions. When I got here, about 30% of our students were reading at grade level. And now we are just close to 70% of our students reading at or above grade level. Many are well above grade level. It's empowering for them to want to be better readers. And the atmosphere in this building is contagious. So if we're all really excited about that growth, then the students get excited about that growth. Well, there's one, which is you're just starting and getting, trying to get the basics. And then there's two, which is you're progressing and just trying a bit harder to learn. And then there's three, which is meeting, so you're all good and you're, you know what you need to know. And then there's four, which would be established, and that you're just knowing everything and that you're ahead of what, where you need to be. I've never had a student be negative about where they're at. Even the ones who are two or three grade levels behind, they're more focused on where they should be. We've had students that have been non-readers in September when we've done the assessment with them. They've been unable to do it or unable to read, and now they are rocking. I'm usually really proud when I get a three over four. It's really fun to bring the rubric home and have my whole family work on it. Well, we really have focused on student engagement, because that's first and foremost. If we don't have our students engaged, they're not learning teacher's craft has to come into play. You need to have fun and be able to play with it, whether it's through an inquiry project, whether it's through uh, digital media projects, whatever it is that you need to use to engage your students. If we do our jobs well, most of those students won't even know that, uh, that it was hard work for us. Each of our students have their own special success story because we don't stop until they do.